what is it that you saw that made you concerned about his medical needs? Um, I was really concerned about, I thought his face looked puffy and swollen, um, which would happen if you are putting a grown man's weight on someone's neck. Um, I, I noticed some fluid coming from what looked like George Floyd's body. Um, and in a lot of cases, we see a patient uh, release their bladder um, when they die. Um, I can't tell you exactly where the fluid was coming from, but that's where my mind went. Um, he wasn't moving. Um, he was being restrained, but he wasn't moving. When you first arrived, was he vocalizing at all? Was he speaking at all? I don't remember. And um, earlier you used the term altered consciousness. Mm -hmm. Is that yes? Yes. And what do you mean by that? What did you see in terms of his consciousness? Um, well, we, um, when we're assessing on a, a level of consciousness on a call, we'll often first try to just um, talk to the patient and see if they respond. And if we don't get a response, we'll often kind of tap him on the shoulder or um, apply sort of painful stimuli. Uh, and often I would do a sternal rub or, you know, press their fingernail very hard. And if they respond to that, we know that, you know, we can assess their level of consciousness based on that. Um, when somebody's on laying on your, or, you know, leaning into your neck, um, that's painful stimuli. So, so I could tell that from the sidebar. Tell what? That he had an altered level of consciousness to the point that he wasn't responding to painful stimuli. You mentioned um, that Mr. Chauvin had a knee on Mr. Floyd's neck. Correct. Did you see where his other leg was? Um, I don't remember anymore, but I think I... I, th I may have said something about it in previous. Um, Did you think it was on Mr. Floyd's back? I don't know. Okay. And in that moment, uh, when you first arrived and, and observed what you could about Mr. Floyd, what did you think you needed to do? I think I, I had already assessed that he had an altered level of consciousness. What I needed to know is whether or not he had a pulse anymore. And, you know, I may back you up just a little bit here, but did you try and assess, you know, how much weight Mr. Chauvin was putting on George Floyd? Um, I, I, I mean, I didn't try to. I recognized that it was an issue right away because he he seemed very comfortable you um with who is he show officer Chauvin okay. um seemed very comfortable with m the majority of his weight balanced on top of Mr. Floyd's neck um in my memory he had his hand in his pocket he looked so comfortable you identify yourself to officer Tao controlling the scene I I spoke loudly enough that I, I would think that the, the other three officers would have been able to hear me throughout the event. And we know you weren't, well, let me ask you this way, how did Officer Tao respond? Um, he said something along the lines of, if you really are a Minneapolis um, firefighter, you would know better than to get involved. What did you think of that? First, I was worried that he wasn't um, going to believe me um, and not let me um, help and I also that's that's not right I mean that's exactly what I should have done there was no medical assistance on scene and I I, be, I got there and I could have given medical assistance that's exactly what I should have done so based on your training and experience and what you had seen um, what did you want to do for this person on the ground? Had, had they let me into the scene, 
I, I already had decided what his level of consciousness was, so I would have requested additional help. I would have wanted someone to call 911 for the paramedics and fire to come. I would have asked someone to run to the gas station and look for an AED. Um, and I would have checked his, I would have checked his airway. I would have been worried about his a spinal cord injury because he had so much weight on his neck. I would have opened his airway to check if there were any obstructions. And I would have checked for a pulse. And when I didn't find a pulse, if that was the case, I would have started compressions. And I didn't have my bed bag, so I would have continued compressions. We don't do, um, we don't give mouth to mouth anymore. Um, so I would have continued compressions at a rate of 100 um, a minute until help arrived. And by compressions, what do you mean? Um, I would have pre put my hands, um, stacked chest. my hands and pressed chest. his chest. Chest compressions. Chest compressions, yep. correct. Yeah. And what's the point of doing chest compressions? Um, pumping pumping the blood for somebody that's not doing that themselves, um, trying to get a pulse back. And were you able to do that, any of those steps? No, sir. Why weren't you able to do any of that? Because the officers didn't let me in to the scene. I also offered, in my memory, I offered to walk, kind of walk them through it or, or told them, if he doesn't have a pulse, you need to start compressions. And that wasn't done either. And so when it, well, is this, are these things that you wanted to do? It would have, it's what I would have done for anybody. And when you couldn't do that, how did that make you feel? Totally distressed. Were you frustrated? Yes. Ms. Hansen, you know, I, as I told you, we can take our time, so feel free to just take a minute. And if you need a drink of water, go ahead. Okay. While you were there, uh, were there other people around you on the sidewalk? Yes. And were they um, saying things to the officers as well? Yes. And do you remember what kinds of things they were saying? Um, no, I was pretty focused on um, trying to get the officers to let me help. And how were you doing that? trying to get the officers to focus on you and get help? Uh, I think, I've, in my memory, I tried different tactics of um, calm and reasoning. Um, I tried to be assertive. Um, I, I pled and was desperate. Did you also at some point start raising your voice? Yes, sir. And maybe used some foul language even? Yes, sir. Why? Um, because... I was desperate to help, and I wasn't getting what I what I needed to do and gaining access. And at some point, the voices of the other people around you, did you feel that sort of interfered with getting the officer's attention? Yes. Um, so as you're doing that, were you able to pay more attention or need more attention to Mr. Floyd and his condition? I, I wasn't, I wasn't really able to, I, I knew he needed help. So at that point it was just getting in there.